I want to welcome everybody. My name is Liz Marion, and I work here at Bunker Labs as a community manager and virtual events producer, which is definitely a new thing, um, hot topic, right? So we're all meeting virtually, and today we are talking about SEO and how you can optimize SEO for your business to drive more customers and revenue and how you will implement that. And we've got some experts on the topic. So we've got Brian Zielinski and Patrick Stanzak here who are both actually Chicago city leaders. So we are lucky to have them in our network and they're gonna be talking about SEO. And then in order to lead our conversation, our facilitator, you might recognize him, our resident celebrity, I'll embarrass him a bit here, Mike Stedman, Iron Mike Stedman as he is known, wearing his Ironbound sweatshirt, Ironbound Boxing is his company, we'll drop some links for all of our guests today and our facilitator into the chat. We encourage you all to talk amongst yourselves in the chat, uh, drop your links, please drop your LinkedIn so that we can all connect and support each other. Uh, we will also be dropping a link to our online community, bunkeronline.org, where we encourage you to continue the conversation after our town hall. If you have any questions, for Mike, Brian, or Patrick on the subject of SEO, please drop it in the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. It is two chat bubbles. Um, we will be taking questions from there to answer live, but you can drop the questions there at any time um, during the conversation, and we will get to those towards the end. So without further ado, I will stop talking and pass the mic, so to speak, over to Iron Mike Sedman. Liz, thanks for that great intro, and I hope everyone is doing well out there, and I hope this town hall is the best part of your week and the best part of your day. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, before we jump into the topic, I want to give, I wanna give uh, Brian and Patrick an opportunity to introduce themselves to you all out there. So Brian, why don't you go first? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate the opportunity from Bunker. Um, you guys are always doing a good job helping us uh, talk about our businesses and share expertise. Um, I'm the founder of a company called Shape Connect. Uh, we're a business-to-business -business matching community and procurement platform. Um, so the goal of our site and platform is to help companies searching for business services and the latest um, softwares and technologies to match with what they need, to take the burden off of a business owner, searching Google, phoning friends and saying, what do you use to automate your marketing? Do you know a good IT consultant that can help me you know, improve a, an IT process or automate a process? Um, so we have a network of business advisors, um, many of whom are uh, former mil military, um, you know, definitely strategist type people, um, advanced degrees, worked for big corporations. And then we've got a network of vetted vendors that we um, match people to. So if any of you are on the B2B side in particular, we, of course, would, would love for you to sign up for our platform. Awesome. Thank you. Patrick. Yeah, so I'm uh, Patrick Stanzak. I'm the founder and CEO of Geek Heroes. So we're, I'm a digital marketing, we have a digital marketing company that focuses on web design and development and SEO. Um, basically, think of me as a chief marketing officer with a focus on SEO and web development. And I try to make sure that you don't have to deal with the stuff you don't want to and focus on the things you like. Um, and I'm out of Chicago, Marine Corps vet. Hurrah, hurrah to all my uh, fellow devil dogs and girls <laughs> out there. All right, let's jump into the topic of why we're here today. SEO, commonly known as search engine optimization. All right, let's talk about what it is, what is SEO? Good question. So SEO, uh, let's start with the basics. Um, there's like 210 main factors of SEO, clearly not going to go into them, but I like to break it down into four uh, main components. And the, well, the first thing is SEO, at the end of the day, the result is organic traffic. So when you're looking at your uh, marketing funnel, right, your actual marketing plan and strategy, inbound marketing is what you think of when you think of SEO. And SEO is the organic side, the things that just happen naturally over, you know, a long period of time of implementation, and it's complemented by uh, PPC or ads. Um, there are four main components, though, that, that I like to break it down to. It's technical SEO. It's a lot of technical stuff. Your, uh, the way your website's created, the architecture. Does Google find your things easy? On-page SEO, the buzzword around this is keywords, if you've heard that. Then you have the third one is off-page SEO. The, key, the buzzword here is link building. And then the fourth one is local SEO, which is basically like let's get found in your local area first and then move outwards. Um, so, yeah. 
that that's us you i hope you guys kind of get an idea from that all right oh sorry i was on mute so what's the difference between like seo versus like keywords and hashtags and you know just random posts on social media gotcha yeah so 93 percent of all search online is done by google search so although facebook is a search engine instagrams is a search engine and all the, these other things where you, there's an actual search bar and you can find things right with hashtags and other things those are all search engines but google owns 93 percent of all the shares you know uh bing's right there with three percent um so pretty far away and they're going to try to capture more and more so the the best roi for you is to focus on google as being the primary thing now um, I focus, I, I approach SEO from a marketing standpoint, from a very uh, holistic marketing standpoint. So identify your marketing plan and strategy, where you want to go, what things are you lacking in, and kind of focus on, in on those. Um, I use a hub and spoke model. So if you, if you look at a hub of a tire, of a wheel, of a, like a bicycle, and then the spokes feeding into it, the hub is the main central point where everything for your business should be pull, pulled into and all the spokes are the, are all the other marketing efforts that are you doing there could be these sub hubs like if you're very very good at instagram and you have a huge following yes 100 percent, that's awesome but again having one central point a website will in the long term will be the best central point for you because you have full ability uh, to do whatever you want there and you get all the seo credit and um so yeah so the difference between hashtags and all that is well google owns 93 percent of the shares you're a small company starting off, you're a mid-sized company, whatever the case may be, you got to get that right first. You got to lay the foundation first where your biggest ROI is going to be. Um, I hope awesome. that answers, Mike. Yep. All right. Mike. I was going to say, Brian, I got a separate question for you real quick. Okay. A lot of our listeners sure. on, we got some third shift entrepreneurs. We got some, you know, part-time entrepreneurs. People are paying their businesses, paying themselves with change. Um, and they don't have a lot of money to spend, but they understand how important SEO is. And so for just kind of putting on our listeners hats, like what should they be focusing on with regards to SEO? You know, that website, that social media, the blog posts. I mean, where are they, you could, again, focusing the best bang for their buck? Yeah, that's a great point, Mike. I mean, I think, you know, the, the first foundational component you have to get in place is obviously the website. And, you know, we pulled some data before this meeting, but you know, Stanford says that 75% of consumers admit they judge a business's credibility on their website and, and the design of the website and the ease of use of the website. And so there's on-page SEO of a website that has to be, that can be optimized to further improve your ranking. So, you know, I think Patrick can obviously break this down further, but if you get your website and the on-page thing, the speed of your site and all these other components that matter correct, that's the first layer of the foundation. I think the next thing too is then getting on the key directories, doing your Google My Business account, um, Yelp, other directories that uh, have credibility and making sure your, your information is consistent across those directories because I think they ding you if you got one phone number on one directory like Google and, and a different phone number on another. Um, they want to see good consistency across um, your listing. So. Mm -hmm. After that, it's, it, it becomes content. I mean, content is the reason people come to websites and um, you've got you've to start to initiate a content strategy. And it doesn't have to be a lot of content at one time, but you know, good quality content um, that's somewhat consistent, I think are the best things you can do. All right, so I want our audience to have some takeaways. First thing you said is get a good website, right? And they can do it on Squarespace or whatever, right? And you said register their business on Yelp, the Googles, all that kind of stuff to really just kind of pop up and then just create just great content to kind of push out there and do it consistently. Is that correct? Yeah, but Patrick, I bet you would caveat on the website part. Yes, you can start yeah. with a Squarespace or a one of those um, more what we call in the box solutions. But WordPress is probably your best place to build a website right Patrick I mean do you want yeah to yeah just just to speaking to that trying to keep it very brief um uh hard coding is probably the best but it's the most expensive so you got pros cons there and and maintenance for a hard coded website is more expensive because you gotta hire actual coders WordPress um so Squarespace Wix um uh, Shopify all them they have a business model that basically like uh, one line of code takes X amount of time to load. The more you have, the longer it takes to load. 
pretty, pretty, pretty easy to understand there. Well, all those businesses have a layer that automatically they have to load. And then on top of that, you build. So the, the bottom for how fast your website could be, it, it's, it's pretty high right off the bat. You're starting at like 1.52 seconds. It's very hard to lower it down to that when you have stuff you need on there. Um, WordPress, if you do it right, because there's also cons to it where you use a lot of themes that are bulky, that's what it's called. And it, it pretty much does the same thing as if you're using Wix or Squarespace or whatever. So if you use a builder like uh, Oxygen Builder or something where it cleans it fully and you're, you're starting from ground zero, like a hard-coded website, that's gonna be your uh, best bang for your buck. And the reason this matters for business is because um, the bounce rates, okay? If someone comes to your page or landing page and they leave right away, it's called a bounce rate. That's, a, that's one of the uh, uh, SEO factors that um, is important to know. And a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to get rid of that and lower the bounce rate. Now, what happens with bounce rate? If you have a high bounce rate, Google's going to rank you lower. If uh, you have a high bounce rate, people aren't going to go on there. If your website takes more than three seconds to load, you lose 50% of the other uh, people that go on that page. Okay. So starting off foundationally from a very clean built website with SEO in mind will uh, benefit you in the long term. And WordPress, uh, from my experience, especially maintenance costs down the line and building the initial website is a lot cheaper than a hard coded website. So for most people, WordPress is going to be the way to go. Billion dollar companies use WordPress. It's good. It works. Uh, that's, that's what I would recommend. So that's my caveat, Brian. Understood. All right, Patrick. So you do a lot of business audits for SEO, right? You go check out their website. Can you give our audience members some tips and tricks, um, of some of the stuff you're looking for as an SEO uh, expert? Yep. Uh, so uh, going off of exactly what I just said, uh, foundation is key. Okay. So you got to start off with a lot of foundational stuff. Sometimes you're so far in that you have a Shopify, Wix, WordPress, whatever it is, and it's working, you're generating a lot. And the best ROI might not be to recreate the website right away. So then you focus on the things that will create the most return. And so going past the website, uh, I break down my audits into, I've done like a hundred or so since March for veteran owned companies for free. So that's open to everybody here. There should be a link to drop and sign up, book a time and it's a full hour. And I do a, again, I take a holistic approach to your marketing. And then from that SEO has its fingers in all of marketing uh, in some aspect. So uh, the tips and tricks, uh, the, things, the things that I see the most often is um, if you're not indexed, you're not real. Uh, really quickly, what that means, uh, Google has these things called spiders. They go out, they find information, they'll look at your website, they'll bring it back to write down in the book, okay? Someone searches for something and on Google, Google looks to that book for those results to get that results page. They do not look at the whole internet. They look at that book. If it's not in the book, it's not real because they're not because they're not going out and searching throughout the whole internet for your results. Um, and the reason is because they have that book organized in a particular way to pick up on certain things. Um, another thing that I see with a lot of uh, startup companies is they get frustrated um, a lot with SEO. There's this magical place called the Google sandbox that does or does not exist. The consensus is it does exist. Google will no, neither do not uh, confirm nor deny. But basically what it means is the first six months of having a domain live, uh, Google's going to try you out a whole bunch of different places. So you might rank, then you might lose everything, then you might rank, then you might lose everything. And they're just basically trying you out. So don't get frustrated the first six months. Just do the foundational things built up, do the things that are going to get you long-term results, which is what SEO is. Um, and, and, and you'll be fine. SEO also takes about four to six months to really just even get going. So be ready for that. Um, and then, so yeah, so technical stuff is indexing is the big one. Most, most people that come to me have really bad indexing. Like they're not even found online. The second thing is they're found for things they don't want to be found for. Like a whole old website is being found over their new one. Um, another thing is their site speed is atrocious. Um, I've, it, Google has a speed test. Uh, it's called Google Insights. Okay. Anybody can just Google Google Insights and throw your uh, website in there, your URL. And this will work for any page. It's a specific page. So throw it in there and see what the speed is. Google's going to give you a score. And you better believe if Google gives you a low score, they're the ones who are grading you. They're the ones who are ranking you. So you better, you better have a pretty, pretty solid score there. 
Um, you should be above 80 for desktop and for mobile. If you're above 60, you're pretty solid. Um, very difficult to do it for mobile unless you spend a ton of money. Um, another thing is the hosting. Uh, avoid GoDaddy. It's, it's not very friendly with uh, new companies and new websites. Support's not very uh, responsive. I recommend like a SiteGround or a DreamHost. And so, so those are some of the main ones for technical stuff. Uh, for on-page, on-page SEO, uh, when, we go, when I go into the keywords uh, s s thing, or set of things for the audit, um, I really talk about just make sure you have some kind of plan. And that's a whole other beast in itself. Um, if you want to do some research, just Google things. And if you see other people, that's a whole nother discussion. If anybody wants to have that, I'm free to have that offline. Uh, then on-page SEO, what kind of link building have you done thus far? That means getting your URL posted on different things. If you do outreach to big blog, blog post companies or things like that where you want to be on or Bunker Labs or whatever it is, get that put on there, okay? Or, or Sh Shape Connect even. Uh, then you have local SEO, which is the easiest thing to really um, move forward with and it's free. So definitely this is something that a lot of people I tell them to start off with. So I give them a to-do list with most important and then like least important and stuff that's not too much important. And uh, indexing is on there usually, site speed's on there. And then the next thing that's on there is Google My Business. Get your Google My Business set up, it's free. Um, literally just Google, Google My Business, set it up. There's a link in the uh, uh, document that should be dropped in there that just got dropped in there right now actually. And in the chat and there, set up your Google My Business. It'll take you like five days to receive a postcard from Google that says, that's literally a verification code. You get it, you set it up, fill it out, blah, blah, blah. Basically, if someone Googles you in the local area, you are more likely to be found than a national brand um, or someone outside that area. And so that's something you definitely wanna do. It's free to set up. And then on top of that, you wanna do listings and citations, which are these big profile pages like Shape Connect, um, uh, like Brian, Brian has shape connect to the listing directory, uh, Facebook page, like a Facebook business page. Cause it's a profile of your uh, page, it's name, address, phone number. And what Google's looking for as uh, Brian noted earlier is congruency. If you have parentheses around the area code, have parentheses everywhere street spelled out, spell out street. And so those are really the points of the whole audit. Awesome. All right. So I want to recap for the audience real quick. Okay. What's the one place they can go to get their site tested? You know, where's the best place to go for that business site performance? Uh, let's go with Google Insights. Google Insights, okay? So if you want your SEO checked, listen to Patrick and go to Google Insights. All right, now, Brian, you got a marketing background, okay? And I hear, I'm a small business owner. We got a lot of small business owners on here. You've got startups, right? But for those of us bootstrapping on a budget, right? It means we ain't got a lot of money, all right? You know, we hear this word SEO over and over and over again. And so we have to think about how we're going to utilize these funds to move our venture forward, particularly retarding, you know, growth and marketing and all this other stuff. Okay. So how do you advise um, companies, particularly small businesses to implement SEO so that they get that return on investment? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's a million dollar question too. If we figure that one out, uh, SEO is something that does cost a little bit of money. Um, and I think it, it, you know, as a business, you have to start to look at um, your time and, and what your time equates to in terms of money. And at what point, you know, I think everyone has to go out there and kind of be like a street, you got to hustle, like you got to go out and pick up the phone and have your zoom meetings and meet with people once you can at the beginning to get your probably get your first few customers. But once you can get that revenue in the door, you know, it then becomes, I think, smart to outsource a level of your SEO to someone like Patrick, who is more small business oriented. Um, and then there's, you know, a lot of other firms and things like that, uh, that are present. So, you know, I think if you do the initial things we talked about, the things that you can control as you're building your business plan and things like that, do those fundamental um, top things. But at a point, I, I don't think as an owner, or even if you have two or three owners of a business, it's, it's prudent to do it yourself in a way. I think you can find a good load balance and a price point in which you can work with somebody to take on some of that burden. Um, so that would be my guidance. I mean, I've, I've worked with Patrick. I work with low cost content writers, so I can give them four or five bullet points on a topic. You know, you want to be, content is extremely valuable to SEO. 
So you want to have things flowing out there. And I, you know, I've got about 12 articles in the queue and I just wrote down some uh, bullet points that would be good for an article. And then the content writer turns it into a good article that then helps my SEO. And then someone like Patrick, if you're working with him, he then looks at and evaluates it from a keywording standpoint to ensure that it's, it's going to help get picked up that article that you, you write. So get your content strategy in order, you know, find a, you know, get out there, hustle, get your first book clients, get the revenue in the door, and then take a little bit of the revenue and find some lower cost, you know, SEO people and content writers, I think, to help your business. Awesome. And what kind of price point are people looking at for when they get, you know, start to invest in SEO? Is there like any kind of trend you see with regards to how much revenue they're bringing in so that they can actually afford the, the process? I'll let Patrick start on that, that point. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. So some companies are really trying to grow quickly and, and if they have investments, right, uh, it's a little bit easier for them. So I'll, I won't talk about them. Um, but for companies that are really bootstrapping and trying to get going, um, when they have products that are higher price point, they'll start before revenue. The products, um, the products that have a lower price point usually start off after they start generating a little bit of sales. Um, so really, really not much income. And I get, I get a lot of clients who um, have been struggling for a year or so to get revenue, and then they would come to me as well. And again, this is just them making some money some other way and, uh, and, and, and saving up to get something going. Um, but for, for the ones who bootstrap and kind of get going, they're, they're generally bringing in uh, about five to 10,000 uh, a month. Um, um, again, those are usually they get to that point by doing other marketing. So, um, but once they get to about five to 10,000 a month, that's where I see a very uh, meaningful uh, interaction with them where they are really set and they know what they want and they know what they need. Again, th those, kind of, uh, those kind of clients are a little bit harder to come by because uh, I mean, they, once you start generating so, like some speed, uh, they tend to double down on what's working instead of looking for other avenues. Um, what I've seen in terms of pricing on our platform is, you know, when, when we have business to business providers, you know, like we have a few SEO companies on the platform and, you know, in terms of their hourly rate, it ranges from about $75 mm -hmm. to up to about two hundred dollars at yeah. least, and I think most of these I would classify as small, medium-sized business uh, SEO experts. Um, it can get pretty, like Patrick said, it can get pretty expensive. But um, you know, I think you're looking at somewhere around that seven hundred and fifty dollar minimum threshold a month and, and above. And and I'm probably mm -hmm. being a little bit. Uh, Patrick would probably say it's, it could be even a little bit higher. But well, I, I would say you're you're more right for the local stuff if you're really trying to rank locally and more just to focus on local the 750 as a starting point is definitely uh agreeable there um and that would be like a monthly thing and then and then if you're moving up higher and you're okay i'm really trying a full marketing approach i'm an online e-commerce store so e-commerce is going to be more expensive right off the bat than just a regular service business as well um so keep that in mind so the 750 he's talking about is mo mostly for service um or getting people you know in the door somewhere and and yeah, but yeah, it, could, it could range up pretty, pretty high. Uh, the more pages you have, that's a consideration. The, the, the range of where you want to rank, um, the number of keywords, and yeah, and really the, the extent of which you want that person to do things, right? Got it. All right, so I want to break it up real quick because we're we starting to get some live questions come through. And if you haven't submitted a question, please do so. All right, uh, Brian, you mentioned content writers. You know, uh, and someone wants to know, Brian Jarvis wants to know, where do you find low cost content writers and how much is low cost? You know, one of the professional writers versus outsourcing to like Bangladesh or somewhere. Right. Um, that, yeah, we, you know, I think right now in particular, the way the economy is, there's, there's good pricing for content writers out there. Mm -hmm. You can get writers as low as like, I've got, I've gotten them as low as $25 a blog and I've gotten them Same. for better quality you know, you're looking at probably a hundred bucks or more per blog. Mm -hmm. um, 
so you can probably find a good range within that. If you need help, you know, fill out the needs assessment. I can link you up with people, content writers on our platform, and um, you can talk to them. And we have people within that window. But I've started to done. I've done a few of the blogs myself, and it just becomes how much time. You know, is seventy five dollars worth it for me to spend on a blog with somebody else? Or I spend, I don't know, four hours by the time I'm done, like thinking through, you know, I do research, which you still have to do. I think a good business owner, you should do the research, know your industry and be able to pass those articles on to the blog writer and say, hey, pull some stats from here. Here's my key takeaways, write an article about it. That I can do within an hour. And then the blog writer can do the nitty gritty of making it look good, sound good. Um, so there will be a cost versus quality dynamic and you'll, you'll probably have to test out a few people. Um, but you can range from, I think, $25 to $200 for startup businesses. Awesome. All right, Chris, I'm going to ask a question, Chris uh, Vanderberg, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question. I'm going to come back to yours, okay? Now, my question, I'm going to push you both a little bit, all right? So I'm, be, I'm a big fan of niching down, right? Like getting super specific of like what you do, how you serve. So like I'm in Newark. My company's Ironbound Boxing. You can't Google Ironbound Boxing without popping up all over the place in Newark, right? And somebody asked me, they're like, why is your name Ironbound? Well, I live in Newark and the neighborhood my gym's at is Ironbound. So it works, okay? But is specific, that's a, uh, I'm a grunt, y'all, I apologize. Uh, niching down versus SEO and which one is better? Uh, they go hand in hand. Um, uh, in terms of SEO, uh, that's, it's, it's a, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you an example. So keywords, right? With keywords, Ranking for boxing is very, very difficult. Good luck. You'll spend millions of dollars trying to do it, and you might not even do it. And if you do it, you got to fight to stay there. Or you niche down, and I, I prefer, and that, that's the way to do it. You find, I don't know, 100 or maybe 50 or 10, whatever it is, right? So let's say we do 10. We, I'll fight 10 or 20 um, keywords that are really long, like boxing in Newark. A lot easier or a specific, all right, a specific style like Southpaw boxing in New York, right? Just yeah. something weird and like, like different. And, and you want to rank for that because guess what? You don't just do it just to do it. You find out, all right, what's, what's, what are, what are my personas? What are the things they actually want, right? What are they looking for when they search? Then you, you find out where they're at the buyer's journey. You write all that down. After you're done with that, you find out, you find out, um, like a pool of keywords essentially. Um, and from those you find um, of specific ones and you just, it's like, I get like a million of them and I filter down. Then after that um, you, you find out it, does it fit what I'm actually doing? You search for it yourself and you see, does it, fit, what's the intent of the search? Are people looking for a top 10 Are people looking for this Are people looking for that? Whatever it is, right? Is it a white paper? Is it a store? Then once you know that it does fit you, is the volume there? If the volume's not there, awesome. I'll rank you in a day. It, you know, it's it's not it's not worth anything to you. So uh, so again, that's that's another thing. Is the volume there or the clicks there? Just because people are searching for it and seeing it doesn't mean they're clicking on it. But just because they're searching it doesn't mean they'll only click on one thing. Also, sometimes clicks are higher than volume. And then uh, putting all that into play, and then optimizing each page for the specific thing, and then realizing that you know uh, uh, one page. Uh, one focus keyword per page per website is the rule. So now you have, you run out of pages pretty quick. So then bl blog, po blog posting and writing and content writing, like uh, Brian was saying, that's a, that, that's a tool for you to create quality pages that people will read based around another keyword. And then you get another blog post around another keyword and so on and so forth. And you interlink everything. But the sp more specific the keyword, the easier it is to rank but the volume is usually lower. So now you're finding that balance. Um, and again, it. it's niche down, but how far? And yeah. You just got to find the factual numbers, that, the hard numbers. That's it. So I take that as niche down and then use SEO to optimize that. So you dominate that space, dominate the competition. So 100%. when someone searches, you know, I don't know, San Diego ice cream shop, bam, you're dominating all over the place, utilizing SEO. 100%. All right. I want to go back to some of our questions. Okay, someone wants to know, would you suggest when bootstrapping, can you budget an SEO manager? Would you say it's okay to start with the manager to get you going for two to three months and then it's manageable on your own after that? 
what I usually do, those that's the purpose of my audits. I, I, I work with a lot of startups and if it's not, if it's not a fit, you get the audit as a takeaway of a step-by-step, -step, this is what you need to do. And so I give that away for free for veteran owned uh, businesses. And literally they got, a, they got, they got a blueprint, just follow it and do it. Although it may be difficult, you're free to email me and I'll help you out. And that's all pro bono to build a relationship. Maybe, you know, somebody, maybe something like that. So I, I recommend just coming to me for that. Awesome. I would definitely agree with him on the audit. And I think it's almost the inverse of what you suggested. Get an audit from someone like Patrick, but I think it's more do the fundamentals first yourself, get the fundamental pieces in place yourself, and then get, get going on your revenues and then, then bring on the SEO person mm -hmm. longer term. All right, we got another question for you all. It says, what's a targeted ROI for a $750 a month SEO budget or any? Like how much revenue are we looking to bring in off of that? Over what period of time is the question. Uh, if it's one month, uh, I mean, maybe some, maybe nothing. Uh, honestly, just being super honest, it, it takes like four to six months just to lay down the foundation. So after four to six months, you're getting found for certain things. You're finally, and what if you just started, right? And you just set up the domain like a month ago, Well, you're still in that Google sandbox. So what I recommend for something like that really is, yeah, sure. You do it, do it, get started, get focused on the local SEO, but also um, uh, I offer something like a reporting tool, which I can, which I also do separately. And it's literally, it, it integrates every single thing for marketing. And you see a nice snapshot and, and uh, a dashboard of everything that you want to see. Um, and everything you're actually tracking in a very easy to way read or easy to uh, read kind of way. And um, I definitely recommend getting something where you can track metrics um, and that you'll actually look at, not just something like Google Search Console where they're there, but when's the last time anybody's really looked at that, right? So, um, so yeah. I think, I think if you're looking for quick wins, you know, that is where maybe you, you consider some paid Mm -hmm. online advertising first on F Facebook is pretty cheap and Google is, is not too expensive, but you know, at the end of the day, the SEO component, I think drives more than it's, it's well into the 90% of, of the traffic to yes. websites that ultimately converts. So yeah, I mean, three, 4% of that converts online for paid ads. And that's, that's still a huge number actually. That's why SEO is valuable in the long run. Um, and so it is a hard thing to quantify, but I think the companies that, that have a good SEO strategy and it's something you do have to start on early in your business life. And Patrick mm -hmm. you know, has hammered me on it before. And um, it's something when That's we launch our new platform and next month, it's something we really, really, really got to be um, thoughtful about. But if you need the quick wins, you might want to consider paid first, yeah. but do the fundamental things that were talked about earlier on yeah. the call concurrently. So you at least get the foundations in place, at least get a baseline content strategy out four, three to four articles a month, you know, something like that, just to get, you know, content out there and your directory listings done and a, and a good solid website. I actually got a better answer real quick. What the ROI you will get is you will be, um, you'll be found by Google and Google will show you to people. Yeah. So, whereas before you didn't have that cause the foundation wasn't set. All right. I'm going to ask one more. I'm going to, I'm going to ask one more question um, from my list and then I'm just going to focus solely on the audience questions. All right. As okay. for the rest of our time. All right, so I have this last question here. Let me find it. Oh, I'm going blank. All right, here we go. All right, um, and you might have already answered this, but I just want to make sure our audience knows, okay? Are there free tools that people can utilize to get the SEO and keyword search? And where do they go to get that? So uh, sign up for Google Ads, okay? I know it might sound kind of weird, but you have to sign up for a Google Ads account to get the uh, Google Keyword Planner, okay? So that's a free one that's pretty good. Um, in that, uh, document that's in the chat that I sent you, I, I literally threw in like a hundred tools for you guys and they're all free for the most, uh, for the most part. I didn't go, I, I haven't filtered through it and seen, I tried to add only the free ones. Um, so go through those, uh, you can look at Ahrefs, uh, SEMrush, uh, Moz, search engine journal, um, and again, it can get overwhelming. So really focus in on what you're trying to do and accomplish and, and try to find that uh, because there are a, a, on average two algorithm updates by Google a day. So it, it's pretty hard to follow unless you're, you know, in that world. 
All right, so I'm gonna keep us on Google. So I'll go back to the audience questions, all right? Um, Google for my Google for business. Somebody wants to know how, how should they be utilizing that? So fill it out. If you haven't filled it out fully, fill it out, okay? Your info, all of it on there. Your hours, okay. What hours are you, do you wanna receive calls? Uh, you know, tired of people or seeing people put 24 seven. Someone calls you at 3 a.m., you're not answering, you're not gonna be doing that. So act as if you had a storefront kind of, okay? Because that's really the purpose of it, although Google doesn't really um, punish many people for it. Uh, you're supposed to have like a physical place um, where people can come in. But use Google My Business, everybody does it. Fill it out fully, add photos, um, add products if you have them, add posts, okay? So like uh, promotion posts, 30% off, um, and things of that nature. Make sure you have your Facebook somehow connected. Um, so Facebook reviews can appear on there as well. And if it's very short, you're not, you haven't filled it out, fill it out all the way. It literally should be like super long. It, 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 the Google My Business is not a short thing once you, once you search for it. Uh, reviews, push reviews hard. Get reviews from every single person you can. Ask them three times, give them a link, give them stuff, just get, get it done. That's the biggest um, ROI from Google My Business is the reviews, okay? Um, and yeah, make sure all the information is correct, get the reviews and freshness is a, is a factor as well. So what that means is like once a month, just go in there and add a photo or two. Can they be stock photos is a question I get. Sure. But also take a photo of a plant inside the building. Okay. Take a picture of you inside the building. Take a picture of the kitchen. If it's your house. Look, they just want to see inside photos, exterior photos, uh, photos of your team, photos of like, um, you know, other things. You can take photos. Just, just, just do that. And then, yeah. It's go. everything that speaks to the validity of the business, that it's a real thing and you can fully understand the services and what's offered. Another part of Google that's important and, and even the, I think Google My Business component is, you know, Google more recently bought YouTube. And so having video content um, is increasingly important. It's very important. I mean, it's, it's clicked. Mike probably can attest to this because I've seen his videos, but people do watch the video content more. And, you know, just for myself, I mean, these are easy content wins that don't cost a lot of money. I've asked now my business advisors and technology advisors, so Mark and Brianna and Yvonne, for example, do the top five, you know, Mark's a technology advisor. What are the top five technology trends you see for 2021 for businesses? Just 30 second, 45 second vi video. And then we can even take that, that, that whatever he said on the video and transcribe it almost into written content. Now it's even a blog article in and of itself. And then these videos are linked into your Google My Business and it's cheap, really good, effective, low cost marketing. And it's free. Google My Business is free. Okay. Now, one of the things you guys didn't warn us about though is when you do Google My Business, you get all these phone calls from these uh, random bots and, and people. So I know that's one of the things you got to deal with. Part, part of the game. All right. Somebody wants to know, um, for a startup company that's getting ready to step into SEO, what should their first steps be? Uh, uh, doing, is it going to be, if it's doing it yourself, um, then set up Google My Business, Google Search Console, Bing Webmaster Tools. You're going to set up uh, probably Google Ads account just so you have it. Um, set up uh, Google Tag Manager. If you're an e-commerce, Google Merchant. I, I know there's so many Google things. Just, just set them up. That's the initial step. In Google Search Console, uh, put in your site maps. And uh, site maps literally a map of your site. And yes, they can be pulled in Squarespace, whatever. You do URL forward slash sitemap dash XM or dot XML and you'll get it. Okay. And you type that in and you put in Google Search Console in the indexing in the sitemaps. And then, so do that. And then after that, um, yeah, sorry. After, after you do uh, all, all that setup, uh, the next step for you should be uh, Google My Business and getting that set up. And then work on UI UX. Uh, the trend for Google right now is they're pushing all the algorithms are really pushing towards UI UX. 
and uh, user friendliness and user uh, usability on the website. That's what they're going to they're going to end up doing and that's what they want to do. So start building your website towards that and the algorithm updates won't affect your site as much um, going forward as well. Somebody wants to know how useful are the WordPress stats and metrics engaging your SEO for your website? Well, okay. So if you're using WordPress, make sure you're using the plugin called Rank Math. Again, it's free. Okay. Rank Math. Do not use Yoast. Yoast, uh, you have to pay for it to get the same stuff that Rank Math has for free. So right off the bat, if you're using an analytics tool and you have it integrated with Google Analytics, I mean, you see what's showing from Google Analytics. So it's, is what it is. It's not a, uh, it just shows you how many visits there are. Um, it doesn't really break it down as nicely as you might want. Um, there, there's a bunch, there's not really much tools. Use something like Ahrefs or uh, SEMrush or uh, to, to get a little bit of better understanding of what's happening. Uh, but a anything in WordPress, I mean, it's, they're usually free plugins. You're going to get what you pay for uh, a lot of time. They're going to show you some basics. Awesome. All right. Our last question. Okay. And I think this is a good question too, because I have my personal opinions regarding small businesses, but I'm going to let you guys step in as SEO. Um, when people are choosing a website name, you know, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? You go, some people, was, some person was told to brand themselves, i.e., uh, you know, MikeStedman.com or something. Is this still true? Um, if you want to get found easier, sure. I mean, is it, but, but, but if, but if that's the goal, I mean, sure, that's the goal. Cool. But it does, it, does that fit what your business is trying to do? Like, is that your business model? Is that part of your branding? Is like, that's what you want to do. You want to make your known, num uh, your name known, or is it strictly for the purpose of, Oh, I want to get ranked for something. Well, nobody's searching for your name to begin with. So right so it's like cool you got found for something for a name that has no volume um, in search so it really doesn't benefit you much um so i'd recommend finding a name that best suits you that's also not super long like five words long uh try to stick to two or three words uh would be the rule of thumb and dot coms versus dot ios versus all that if you're a tech company i dot io is becoming more popular dot com still like the uh you know, tried and true type of thing, uh, .edu, only if you're an edu, and .org, same thing, .gov, same thing. But I would stay away from .nets. Nobody does that anymore. Um, .io and .com are like the popular ones. .com for sure is still the majority. Awesome. Well, Brian and Patrick, I appreciate you all jumping on with our audience today and dropping all that SEO knowledge. Why don't you go ahead and give a plug for yourself so people know where they can find you out and uh, how they can reach out to you. All right. Uh, you, you can find me. Um, I'll drop in the chat. Um, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. All right. I don't know if that's been dropped in there already, but uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me like on my website. You can schedule an SEO audit with me and I'll also drop my email and the link to a free SEO audit, like scheduling thing that you just go in there and select the time that's best for you. And I'll drop both of those in there, the email and that. And also check out that um, that uh, Excel doc or the yeah Google Sheets doc that I threw in there. It's got like a hundred different links for everything from selecting color palettes to fonts to free stock image websites to uh, plugins for WordPress and a whole bunch of other stuff. So check that out. I put that together. It'll help some people. Um, but yeah, that's that. Brian, and how can people find you? Sure. Um, I, my LinkedIn uh, is up there, but you know, I think the biggest thing is for any, all business owners um, joining shape connect. I mean, getting on building your company profile um, you know, it's an ecosystem that's designed to help each other. So you put in a business need, we try to find someone else in the ecosystem that can solve that problem. And it, it's really a good way to try to grow revenues and um, you know, get the right solutions for your company. So the right services and technologies and, I think we have some really great business advisors, people who've owned companies for 10 years and sold them off, had a good exit, people that came out of the military and succeeded in corporate America. So they're, they're higher level strategists um, and are always willing to take kind of an initial free consult. So um, one of the links we have is, you know, 
tell us a little bit about a business need and sign up for Shape Connect, and um, we'll hook you up with an advisor and you can talk through a problem and, and see what solutions and things can meet your needs and budgets. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you both for coming on here. And uh, again, man, you're such a great asset. And if you're new to the Bunker Labs community, listen to me very carefully. We have an amazing network of veterans and military spouses like Brian and Patrick on here, right? Before you go pay somebody else, you know, a bazillion dollars for your SEO and that you don't even know that has no vested interest in your success, truly take advantage and leverage the Bunker Labs network. This is why we do these series, right? It's let you reach out and touch these people. Patrick's already said he's going to give you an SEO audit. He does this free for veteran owned businesses. So take advantage of that. On another note, Bunker Labs has amazing content. We're launching a frontal assault to support you all during this pandemic. We've got these virtual town halls going. We've got Bunker Online up and running, which is our social platform where you can connect with other entrepreneurs. And yes, we just launched a podcast and yours truly is the host. It's called The Transition. And we take off our armor for you and let you know really what it takes behind the scenes to go from zero to hero as you start and launch your business. So I would greatly appreciate it if you go ahead and go to Bunker Online, get registered, check out The Transition, uh, reviews are greatly appreciated. It's on iTunes, Spotify, and just check out all the other events that we're putting on to empower you all during these challenging times. Listen, nobody is going to save you. You got to save yourself. But what we can do is we can make it easier for you and uh, get you around other entrepreneurs so you don't have to go it alone. So just be sure to take advantage of those. And if you need us, feel free to reach out to us. Contact me on LinkedIn and the rest of the Bunker Labs team. I'll let Liz close us out. Well, and Mike, I would be remiss if I did not mention that right now our Veterans in Residence application is open until October 15th. So if you are a business owner and you are looking for a cohort, an incubator, Brian and Mike are both alums of that program in New York and Chicago, respectively. So I encourage all of you to go to bunkerlabs.org to apply to the Veterans in Residence program if you are in that stage. And if not, we have programs for entrepreneurs from idea to scale. So we encourage you to sign up on Bunker Online. Shelby, uh, drop that link um, and sign up for the program that is right for you. So thanks everybody for attending and we look forward to seeing you at our next town hall.